So in our next segment, uh, which if those association composition and aggregation conversation took only about 40 minutes for us, uh, the next topic or the next type of association which is um, uh, inheritance, inheritance, inheritance. Uh, I really cannot write well. Let me just do a better job. Inheritance. Okay. In inheritance type of association, we draw two classes, right? And usually when we have, um, uh, when we use uh, two classes separately, we say that d we design them separately, right? Despite the fact that we use them very closely, a room is designed separately, and the house was designed separately, okay? And so similarly, these boxes in any of these associations indicate that the, the individual classes are designed separately, uh, separate from each other. They have different class declarations, different class names. But the next type of relationship is going to be drawn like this, basically like this over here with, with an arrow, uh, which is like this, uh, uh, which has this, Triangular, triangular arrowhead shape, okay? And so this new discussion about this other type of uh, relationship and everything related to it, inheritance, is going to take us the remaining three weeks of the class, okay? So, so uh, uh, let's get ready for this, and uh, uh, we are now ready to begin this discussion. Inheritance as relationship between classes, and why is it good, and why do we need this? Okay, so step number one, first of all, I am going to actually, uh, we're not going to demonstrate a lot of it in this small demo, uh, demo type of uh, programming. Uh, what I'm going to do is just my usual uh, way of doing this, just clean this uh, file, close the solution, and I'm actually going to get out of Visual Studio, and today uh, I would like to uh, basically do some of my testing uh, more with code blocks, uh, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, in my case here, configured to use an open source compiler. Okay, so first of all, the code samples are being posted and updated uh, on a weekly basis, and this was our latest version of Pet License application. As you can see, I have three files, which I keep uh, uploading with the latest uh, version of it. Uh, what I would like to do is now uh, today, and this is what you can do at home, I will uh, use uh, code blocks uh, to um, continue working on this project and quickly refresh your memory on what's going on with the current state of affairs with this pet license application, right? So I'll wait for this to start, and uh, we will create new project and uh, try uh, going back to this code. So here in code blocks, uh, we just uh, now if you don't have this management which shows you projects and and uh, other like files and other type of information, if you don't see it, uh, you will be able to open it. I I prefer to st start with blank screen uh, usually in my projects, but. Um, uh, for me to create a new project, um, I will basically just say uh, uh, view and uh, view this manager, bring back this management console, go to my workplace, right click and say um, actually file new, uh, new project, right? So just go the standard way of uh, creating new project. And you know my favorite project is an empty project. Uh, just quickly say go with, uh, with that uh, idea in mind. Uh, go next to the next page. And then project title. Now, I have already used code blocks before. You can see it points to some location. So today is week 13. So again, uh, week uh, 13. And uh, this is going to be our continuation of pet license uh, application. So I'm going to... 
name it pet license application and go next and say yes I want both configurations and use GCC compiler uh, it also knows that other compilers may be available so but we're gonna stick with the GCC compiler uh, which is the the one that I installed alongside with the code blocks and say finish right and so I have this perfect uh, empty project uh, I know its location is under code blocks right here and this is uh, pet license here and uh, all that it did so far is that created this code blocks uh, project uh, file uh, but I will add new source src uh, new uh, source subdirectory and this is where I'm going to download all that I have posted on the samples page right so go back to the samples page and right here just uh, one by one download yes save link as and say uh, go ahead use this location uh, save right so then should be able to save all of them in that location save link as save this one and also save main download and save save link as right so all I did was just simply downloaded all three files under code block project uh, week 13 pet license right it's still going to be the same project and, and all right but this is uh, what I have inherited from uh, last week Going back to the project here and say uh, pet license right click um, add files right so since I would like to have project with source files I would like to add files and I'm gonna go on the source and just very similar to what we did in Visual Studio we're gonna be adding only CPP files if you press control key down and click another file uh, you can add multiple uh, files in one shot or just do this thing one at a time right here uh, do not include header files on the list of your source files do not add them because remember header files are processed by the preprocessor when the includes are resolved before the code is compiled but all implementation files uh, so far that we have we need to open and we will be adding them to all configurations that the project supports and we're just gonna click OK and my default config, uh, configuration is debug but under sources I have my files and we can start looking at them and all that but uh, before we do this let me just uh, quickly um, check if I can compile this stuff right so just gonna say build oops so I don't know what it's what it's doing there 